assisting me today, of course, is Bonnie Herman, our media director, and our choir. And for the very first time, we have a new leader in our house today, and it is Mr. Al Andrucci. <laughs> and he is very excited, we are excited to be here today. Jack, we get yelled at on Zoom, and of course, Christina on PowerPoint. I'd like to thank you guys for the best of all for being our worship host this morning. I'd like to welcome you all to the spirit of worship this morning as we come together in our summer series. Today, we are on the letter X, our last week, our theme was hard for me, Lord. And there is a new Lord in so many ways in the community of faith and neighborhood we are. This week, X will be explored for our local Catholics. So, whether you're here in person or at home uh, watching us today, thank you and welcome. And may the spirit of the Holy Spirit be through you today in this time of worship. Let us begin our service this morning with our African and social affirmation and land acknowledgement. Nova Scotians are a distinct family of people in our community who have contributed to and have been a key part of Nova Scotian culture and history. We acknowledge that African teaching, strength, and perseverance continue to challenge and inspire our community. Our land acknowledgement. We acknowledge that this land on which we gather or worship is the traditional land of the Mi'kmaq people. We acknowledge that we live on this land, and as people, we have agreed to share and care and use this land. May we, may we the people who remember this and give thanksgiving and respect. To take a moment today, maybe just bow your head and close your eyes. And when we take a deep breath in, I want that deep breath to be the love of God. And when you exhale, a thought that you need to release that's unnecessary. So we'll take a deep breath in and release. A deep breath in and release. And a deep breath in and release. I'd like to bring Alvin forward as we light up. We light the Christ candle, sign of the light that lives with us and within us. God's generous light shines out from all of us. We light this candle as a sign of the Christ light we carry within us. We are God's generous light in the world. Praise be. We light the pride candle as a celebration of all the wonderful diversity in which God created us and calls us good. In this community of faith, we celebrate that all are welcome in this place. Thank you, Alvin and Martha, for helping us with that today. You did a great job. And we'll see you a little bit later. Our centering song this morning is Your Love is Amazing, Alleluia. More voices, number 26. Please stand if you are able. Good morning, everyone. And uh, this is a, a movement dancing song, so feel free to move as the Spirit moves you.
Your love is amazing, steady and unchanging. Your love is a mountain firm beneath my feet. Your love is a mystery, how you gently lift me. When I am surrounded, your love carries me. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Here is stairs, in the presence of God. May we all be renewed for the week ahead. Here are stairs, may God be glorified. We must worship. We need to worship. Let us worship now. Our opening prayer. Let us pray with our opening prayer, Lord God. We join together to worship you today. Please help us to know your presence. Sing. Bring up your peace, your love, your mercy, and justice in us. May your voice resonate through our bodies, through our spirits, and our lives. Birth in us life, birth in us new life, abundant life. And equip us to share that life and love of the world you so love. Amen. I invite you rise in body and spirit of your for our opening hymn, which will become touch our hearts.
August 11th, 1967, 57 years ago, uh, I came to Halifax as a family. My mom, dad, and the three brothers. Uh, we were called landed immigrants at that time. And we spent the first night at uh, Waverly Inn in Halifax. <laughs> <laughs> So it's exactly, you know, it's, uh, August 11th is always something that's been printed in my mind about the uh, anniversary, you know, celebration of our, I think uh, we had a 50 uh, years in Canada celebration with our family, all my, every one of the Schwartz family came together and we had a great time. And uh, the other thing I would like to just mention is my daughter is visiting from Toronto and we had a great time with them, we did all kinds of stuff and hopefully they'll be coming this evening to uh, camp with us at the backyard and I might even introduce them to some culture of the opera. <laughs> <laughs> so well, my life's been like a roller coaster here. Um, not last Sunday, I wasn't here last Sunday. The Sunday before, um, I got a well, it was that Monday, I got a phone call that my sister got her results back and she has stage four cancer. So I hope you all saw keep her in her prayer. Um, so I went home last weekend to keep her spirits up. Um, she seemed to be in good spirit. Um, we have planned a trip for November to go away with the sister, um, me and my other two sisters. And she said, well, you know, I only can live one day at a time and I just pray that it gives me enough time to go on my trip. So she, her spirits, uh, we had a good laugh. And, but on another note, my uncle turned 80 and so um, the kids all had a birthday party for him. So I think that helped too, is the celebration. Um, I have more. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, um, but while I was home, um, August 1st, and I may not say this right, because I always get it wrong, but, um, I have to think about the word in my head, um, emancipation, and that uh, started in 1884, when, um, uh, Upper Canada and Lower Canada, um, got rid of slavery. So I went to, to the church service on Friday night, they had a church service because of this. And I also went to church on Sunday. So even though I went home, I still went to church. <laughs> so I just want you to keep this in, our, in your prayers. Thank you. Good morning. Well, the big night is tonight. I know there are some people here today who are volunteering this evening, and we're very grateful. We want you to know that the doors will be kept closed until 6.30, the outside doors. We won't be letting people in until 6.30 because we want to have a meeting with everybody who's volunteering in the narthex. And we're asking you, at about 6.20, we'll meet in the narthex. We're asking you to wear your name tag. That will be really helpful. Uh, we'll, you'll be given your assignment then. Some people will be needed downstairs, some people upstairs, so uh, you'll, be, you'll find out what your job is then. Uh, and then immediately, sorry, I think Jim plans to do that immediately following this morning service, yes. Um, but we will still be gathering at 6.20. Um, so give all your friends and family a last minute reminder about the, the evening tonight, uh, the, the concert, yeah. It, it, the, uh, the, the quality of the talent is just mind-boggling. We are so lucky to have these two in our midst, and uh, there's something for everybody. There's pop, there's opera. Uh, it, it will be a wonderful evening. Um, and I'll just say that a week from today, we won't be here because we'll be celebrating our 45th wedding anniversary, which happened right here at this. <laughs> I always have to the last word. And little did I know that uh, 45 years ago, I not only married Lorna, I married into the church. Thank you.
Prayer of Illumination. Let us pray. Loving God, we open our hearts to your word this morning with appreciation for your loving wisdom. Keep us open to your teaching, reading, ready to feel your presence and receive your words. We share our deepest thanks for Jesus, your Son, who lived with you and the Holy Spirit forever and ever and whose wisdom is revealed in this readings. Amen. Would you like to do your reading as well? Your scripture reading? Yes, sir. Oh, that's what we Oh, nice. Oh, Let's see. This one here. Oh, well, okay. This one right here. That would be perfect. Okay. How can you, how can we make up to you for what we have done? You shall, you asked, shall we bow before the Lord with offerings of yearling calves? Oh no, for if you offered him thousands of rams and ten thousands of rivers of olive oil, would that please him? Would that satisfy him? If you sacrifice your oldest child, would that make him glad? Then would he forgive your sin? Of course not. No, he has told you what he wants, and this is all it is. To be fair, just, merciful, and to walk humbly with your God. Amen. So I have this passion 
should have done this. And the person I was engaging with was said, why would you get upset if you have money to buy a condo so you want to make more money into your business? It's not really in line with my thought process, but I want to listen to everyone. I want to be fair. But where am I going with this? Where it's leading is when I look out and I see a city of cranes. Everywhere. Cranes beside encampments. How does this make sense? Where is the where is the egalitarianness of this? Why is it not connected? I work part time. I work in a campsite for the summer. None of you know that. <laughs> How many times do I get on the phone and someone says, "How much is it to rent a tent?" Put a tent up until you're closing in. Not a day goes by, we don't get three of those phone calls. Not a day. People need a place to live. Because $46 a day is $1,000 a month, which is still cheaper than renting. Social justice. These are all social justice issues. Those cranes, the parking lot of cars in front of the big box store where you can afford a membership every year to buy things. It, it, it trickles on many levels. And I got to thinking about it more and more, and I thought, I can't just write all of this down because it won't be cohesive. There's random thoughts on different levels of injustice. But what are the principles of social justice? There's five principles, and we don't have to get into all of them today, but it is primarily number one, access to resources. It is actually a critical part of what social justice is. It is equity. How are people given tools and needs to come with others with similar participation? Is everybody given a voice? Is everyone given an opportunity to be heard on whatever is affecting them? Diversity. Understanding cultural differences. Principles of social justice. And lastly, human rights. It's probably one of the most important principles under social justice. That is the foundation of the concept. In my uh, album, Slow, a really important sentence. And what does the Lord require of you? He requires you to do justice, and to love with kindness, and to walk humbly. Equitableness. An article by David Poole and Andrew Reisman. They're spiritual leaders, but they're also social advocates, much like the United Churches. Doing justice. Finally, God tells us to do justice. Perhaps you struggle to know what it means to do justice. How did I do justice this past week? What does it look like? We have often defined justice by placing it primarily in a political, economical, or judicial realm. These definitions make it difficult to identify what you are doing just as on a regular basis. What laws or practices allow for racial discrimination? What businesses take advantage of low income people and charge them exorbitant rates of interest? While they are even a part of social justice, we must fully engage in them. They can be so distant from our daily lives. Our definition of justice is to create a world where all people have an equal opportunity to fully develop the gifts that God has placed within them. Justice is supporting an overwhelmed single parent who is struggling to find time and resources and to give adequate time to their children. Justice is a host of other activities that level the playing field and provide equal opportunity for all. 
Doing justice is also developmental, meaning that we don't simply give things away to we need, but we help people help themselves. It's the old saying is, they give a fish metaphor. We all have an opportunity to do justice, to help people, and help them help themselves. And it goes with the words of John Lewis. John Lewis from 1942 to the year 2000, it was a very big civil rights leader. He said, A democracy cannot thrive where power remains unchecked and justice is reserved for a select few. Ignoring the cries and failing to respond to this movement is simply not an option. For peace cannot exist, for justice is not served. Amen. Amen. We're going to move into uh, now our ministry music. I'm going to invite Byron to come and come forward. Today we're, um, I'm going to. Uh, we're going to present uh, the song Field of Spirit, which I wrote uh, some time ago. We sang it uh, many months ago. And it's perfect for the theme of social justice and that it, uh, it asks the Spirit to come to us to help us in, the, in all the things that we need.
<laughs> I promise to play the right. In gratitude for the love we have received, we offer our lives and our living to carry God's message of love into the world and into our community. As we, one aspect of our stewardship lifestyle is to present our offering, which will be received. So the offering will be brought forward. step here. in the Lord's Prayer. Loving God, we come before you today with so many prayers on our hearts, so many that we may not know, even know where to begin or how to come to you. We sit here in this stillness, in this silence, to seek your spirit, your guiding presence in our lives. Let us soak up the long days and the warm sun. May our feet walk on sandy beaches and our heads rest on thick grass under blue skies. This summer, God, may our breathing slow and our hearts open. God, help us to be present to all that is so that we may best see all that might be. God, as the heat of summer intensifies, let us be mindful of the needs of people around us. Today, we pray for those without air conditioning, without electricity, without clean water, and without health care. We pray for those who may be in survival mode this season. Loving God, let us pray for the world God loves, the church God calls, and all people according to their needs. This is the promise of God to whom we now pray. Loving God, we come before you today with so many prayers in our hearts, so many that we may not even know where to begin. We st sit here in the stillness and the silence to seek your spirit, to seek your guiding presence in our lives. Let us pray for the world God loves, the church God calls, and all the people according to their needs. This is the promise of God to whom we now pray. 
We love, loving God, we offer your prayers, trusting in that your love will use them in us for the fulfillment of your, your purpose for your creation. Give us courage to be part of your answer to our prayer. As we now lift our minds, heart, and voices to you, Jesus, who taught us and his disciples to pray, as you are both our mother and our father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not on temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Just uh and just uh, just before that, just a reminder that next week is our uh, our hymn festival where we're singing all of our popular hymns. And if you have any uh, any hymn that you would like uh, to be included into the uh, into the worship next week. Uh, let me know today, and we'll be finalizing that uh, next week when we'll be singing uh, maybe eight or ten of all of our favorite hymns next week. So.
Like a rock, like a rock, God is under our feet. Like the starry night sky, God is over our head. Like the sun on the horizon, God is ever before. Like the river runs to ocean, our home 